become afternoon uh, sawadika and uh, thank you all for uh, coming here uh, i like to thank uh, usec uh, kun lucas and kun chuchai to giving me opportunity to speak in the presentation so after a very enlightening two presentations from uh, uh, dr alan davis it's a difficult task for me to keep you engaged because i'm standing between you and lunch <laughs> Yeah, at least there is some. <laughs> so, to begin with, like uh, Wenger is a U.S.-based company. It's a family-owned company. We have been doing extruders for the last 80 years. Uh, it's uh, so. I think all of you are nutritionists, so this presentation was made for different people, different audience. So I don't need to go very deep into it. Maybe I can learn more from you than <laughs> I give the presentation. So in simple terms, it's providing the food necessary for survival, health, and growth. Uh, and you know how to mix all these ingredients. So like uh, Dr. Alan Davis was uh, speaking, like in aquaculture, we have the big issue of formulating feed for many different species this is much different from poultry or your cattle like the poultry guys they always feel that they are the top notch nutritionists but actually it's easy for them they just do for either the broiler or the layer it's much more easier but when it come for a aquaculture nutritionist you don't know sometimes shrimp do well monodon do well then next wanami do well then sea bass sea bream salmon so many different species so you need to have lot of in depth nutritional knowledge and also about the aquatic species that you are working on to do your uh, formulation so this is the basics of uh, feed characteristics like you want to check the particle size because different size of animals you want to feed from small size big size and you want to give the right nutrition for the aquatic organism for which you are going to formulate the feed the animal should consume it quickly uh, so that it gets the good nutrition and also you should feed it at a place where the animal would be able to take it because like in the shrimp pond sometimes some feeding area some dirty area people don't realize and they start feeding there they're going to add more waste and it's not going to reach the animal so this was like a typical uh, feed formulation where you had like 32% fish meal from dr alan davis presentation we know that like it's more soy based diet now and it's been high, widely accepted the world over and the fish meal is just to balance your amino acid profile typically a uh, pelleted uh, shrimp feed is the base even now even after 30 years of shrimp farming it's the base for the feed production because it's much more uh, easier less uh, complicated technology we adopted from the poultry industry and also you have a you achieve what you want to get you get the good density for to make the feed to sink then you have easy to store and we have some improvement in the water pollution compared to the mash feeds so what are the advantages of this uh, pelleting process like the pellet mill cost is much more lower you can get higher rates today pellet mills with high capacities are available then you have less complexity so any operator can easily work on the pellet mill but the disadvantage is when you want to make different types of feed because some people want to have floating feed some people want sinking feed and there's a group of people who want the feed to sink very slowly they say that oh i don't want the feed to sink like a rock it needs to sink slowly so these are the disadvantages on the pellet mill where you can just make sinking feed if you are able to make floating feed maybe it's by mistake on the pellet mill and it's very difficult to perfect that mistake always so the industry is changing more and more like genetic improvement we want like uh, what dr alan davis was saying that like we have a new breed like the animal is now capable you need to give the right feed to achieve the growth like the chicken industry which did like half kg in two months now we are able to do 2 kg in the same period like that the wanami of the uh, genetically modified not i wouldn't say modified more uh, breeding program it's capable of growing fast if you are able to give the right nutrition uh, the right uh, type of pellet to the species so we want good floating control you want make it to sink you want good fcrs then better water stability and increase pellet durability so that the pellet you want to transport it over long distances you make it in a feed mill 
you ship it long distance, you load it on the truck and you unload it, especially in some parts of Asia you see they just throw the feedback. So there is going to be abusing, the feedback is going to be abused. So you want to make sure that the pellet does not break or create more fines and add more wastage. So the more the fines, more the breakages, it is going to pollute your water more. And today like we are used on the pelleting industry, like we are used to the crumbling technology, but more and more now the industry wants entire pellets. So when you want to do entire small diameter pellets, we need to go for a different technology than pelleting. So this was in 2011 when Dr. Albert Tacon, he reported the benefits of extruded shrimp feed. Uh, there have been a lot of work being done for uh, almost two decades. But this was one of the reports of Dr. Albert Tacon in the WAS in 2011. So he said it like reduces the ingredient cost. So this is one of the major constraints that we have in the feed formulation. I will in the subsequent slides I will explain more into this. Better water stability, reduce nutrient leaching. So when I told about nutrient leaching, I put this extruded shrimp feed in water about 8.45 when I came in here. It has been more than 3 hours. And you can see that the water is still very clear. So probably the nutrients have not leached. But we don't want to keep the shrimp to eat after three hours. We wanted to eat as quickly as possible. So that's why the AQN systems are designed that we want to make sure shrimp eats very quickly. So all this is achieved by higher starch gelatinization. You get the binding in the extruder to get a good starch gelatinization. Extruder I will uh, describe in simple terms as high pressure, high temperature cooking. Whereas in your pellet mill, you do not reach that high temperature and you do not get the pressure at all over there. So these are the effects of the extrusion on the starch in your formulation. You can see that it gelatinizes the starch, improves the digestibility, forms the starch lipid complex. So you get the binding by the process of extrusion. It melts the starch and make them to stick together and bind them in a strong pellet. And it increases the susceptibility of enzyme hydrolysis. Maybe this good or this bad. Like what Dr. Davis was saying that if you add some enzyme, oh, it is all gone after extrusion. So you have to depend on uh, some post pellet coating or addition on top. We have some uh, uh, equipment now where you can add either a powder or a liquid as a top coat after the extrusion process. So many people have not seen this for a very long time. We almost forgot about this, the tiger. So you see that the minimum starch required for floating is about 20 percent and the sinking is 10. But this is just a thumb rule. Many people go by this, but as a nutritionist, as a feed formulator, you have to work with your uh, operator, the person who work on the machinery and fine tune your starch content to make the right feed. So this is the minimum moisture levels required for the starch gelatinization depend on the ingredient that you are using, whether it is wheat or corn or waxy corn. You see that you require like high moisture inclusion in the nutrient mix, in your recipe mix to get this starch to gelatinize. This is very difficult to achieve in the pellet mill, but this will be the general norm of moisture in an extruder. So this helps when you do the processing in two different conditions. So this is also the cook, cook level, you can see that you get like 30 percent cook of the preconditioner, okay, at least now we have double stage, three stage preconditioner on the pellet mill, but the extruder in dryer is where you get the maximum cook achieved, more than 90 percent. So Dr. Chen is thinking, I think he do not agree with me. <laughs> Another thing like in the fish, the water stability of the pellet is very important. Many people do not realize this uh, because they think that once you feed the pellet, fish already eat. So you think, oh, it is good. So it is already finished. It has gone into its stomach. But here the pellet break down quickly inside the stomach and 
this will lead to some problems in the fish like you can see the stomach it is more dilated you call this as a GDA is gastric dilation and air circulitis uh, problem in the fish. So, this will lead to the fish uh, actually spitting out like vomiting the feet after they actually eat it or sometimes they may even uh, die slowly you may have some small mortalities going on over a period of time. So, to explain this more better you see this is the pellet you hydrate it and then you try to press it and see if the pellet break or not. You can see here many of the pellet they break actually when you do like this it should still retain the shape. So, this means that you have done the right extrusion process you mean it depend both on your formulation as well as your extrusion process conditions the right moisture addition the right temperature and the right uh, steam that you are giving into the pellet. So, you see that the pellets that cracked or semi crushed did, did have been processed by low SME, SME is expanded into specific mechanical energy it is a mathematical calculation if any of you is interested like I can give this formulation to you how to calculate the SME when you process the ingredient through the extruder. So, this feed which is processed with low SME the pellets when consumed by fish these are prone to this GDAS whereas, the ones which held up the pellet remain intact they process at higher SMEs and they did not have this GDAS uh, problem. So, these are the some of the benefits of extrusion over uh, pelleting you can see that you get lot of recipe flexibility like you told now today the key word is you need recipe flexibility because the ingredient prices are always increasing and ingredient prices I will compare to the oil price it is always increasing suddenly you feel there is a decrease, but it is very short lived and again it start increasing. So, you need to choose different type of ingredient it is a challenge for nutritionist because every now and then you cannot increase your uh, shrimp feed prices you want to make your uh, feed cost to be more or less stable. So, you need to have a different mix of various ingredients to get to this uh, recipe flexibility and extruder is one equipment which is very versatile it can handle different type of ingredients. You get moisture control expansion control better durability and you can do small size pellets also on the extruder because this is a challenge on the pellet mill and many a times we have to do the crumbling crumbling is the norm when you want to do the starter diet number 1, 2, 3 you have to do the crumbling and in crumbling many people have reported that there is like 25 percent process loss lot of dust generated very cumbersome even the production cost increases and uh, a lot of hassle uh, for the feed mill. And also the shrink we call the shrink at the end of the year you lose lot of ingredients say you process like 100,000 tons of feed raw material you buy, but your output is far less you produce only like 90,000 or 95,000 then the top management ask you where did this 5,000 ton go nobody has an answer because this is the shrink. So, the more you try to reduce the shrink the better the profitability of the feed mill. So, again these are the comparison. So, we have better versatility floating can utilize more ingredients better and also you see in extrusion because of the high temperature high pressure cooking the final product we call it as we, I would some people say sterilized I would not use the term sterilized it is not appropriate I would say the extruded pellet is pasteurized compared to the pelleted feed where the temperature may not exceed to that level to pasteurize the ingredients. In extrusion by nature of the process you get good water stability without any additional binders added, but in pelleting you need some binder it can be a natural source mostly they use the, the most expensive wheat flour you know wheat flour fine ground wheat flour uh, the bakery grade is more expensive it is you need to add a lot of it to get your binding and the water stability on the pellet mill. But in extruders like by virtue of the process you get this done with the regular ingredients. 
So here we have less fines, and also you can use least cost formulation methods. I'd prefer to the, use the term best cost formulation method. So you need better grind. This typically requires more fine grinding, pulverizing, which utilizes more energy cost. You can do small size, this uh, feed sample, this is like a 0.6 mm extruded uh, sinking shrimp feed. Entire pellets without crumbling. I have some samples, if somebody wants to see, it's there at the end of the room. And the extruded feed formulation cost typically is US dollar 100 lower per ton because of the different raw material and raw material flexibility you have. Many people don't really real, realize this because this is something which you save money every hour. You save on ingredient, you save on every hour. But when you see the equipment cost, maybe this pellet mill and you compare the price of an extruder, extruder may be like a 10 times more expensive, the extruder equipment. But the capital equipment, your capex of the feed mill, you are going to do only once probably in like 10 to 20 years. But the ingredient is something which you are going to buy day in and day out, every day. So you bleed slowly. Every day you lose a lot of money, but in extruder, you actually save some money. But your initial capital investment is very high. So that's the only major difference between an extruder and a pellet mill. And I know Thailand is the world leader, we have been learning from you, we have been learning from the uh, CP group, Thai Union group for many years from India on the technology to do the shrimp feed, so I don't need to talk more into uh, all these things. So these are the micro feeds which you can do on the extruder. Actually you can go below 500 micron, we use a specialized equipment called the spirizer, the SAS process where first you extrude a noodle and then this noodle goes through a spinning chamber like this, it is called the spirizer where we get small fine particles which can be used, especially if, like in the hatchery diets. So microfeeds from 0.5 mm to 1.2 mm, these are the feeds, entire pellets made on the extruder. And historically, like we had only two stages from the hatchery, go to the grout. But now, like all over Asia and the world, the nursery phase is introduced. So we try to hold the shrimp in a nursery for 20 to 30 days, like uh, to retain them under high biosecurity conditions. You require the high grade, high quality feeds to cater to this special market. Because many times you cannot use the grout feed into your indoor nursery system and we feel more and more the the whole aquaculture industry is going to move indoors. I think even CP told in the last uh, goal meeting in Guayaquil that they expect that in the next 10 years most of the industry will go indoor. So the more intensified and more indoor aquaculture systems are going to come up, more specialized feeds are being required. So this is one of the indoor stacked raceway system of Dr. Addison Lawrence Lee, the former professor from the Texas A&M University. He has grown this at very high density stacked raceways. Uh, he even told that you can grow in one hectare of this stacked raceways the quantity of shrimp that will you will grow in hundred hectares. How many of you have counted like the number of pellets between the pellet mill and the extruder? I don't think anybody would have counted. Just if you get an opportunity, grab some pelleted feed, grab some extruded shrimp feed, weigh them both and you count the number of pellets. You see that you have almost three times more pellets made on the extruder than the pellet mill. Can anybody give the answer why this is possible? Because in the pellet mill, you get many long and short size pellets because the cutting is not uniform. 
but in the extruder you have the cutter which cut the pellet more uniform. So, we talk only about the diameter of the pellet, but nobody mention about the length of the pellet. If uh, some feed manufacturers start mentioning about the diameter as well as the length of the pellet, there will be a paradigm shift in the industry. Because of more uniform cutting, you get more pellet. So, you may ask what is the big deal? Why do you need more pellets? Anyway, the shrimp is going to eat, no problem. Shrimp is different from like a, you take a pet food, a dog, you have a big bowl, you feed this bowl, oh, <laughs> it is going to eat all the feed. So, it is not very important that your nutrition is very perfect or you need every uniform uh, feeding. But in the shrimp, especially in high density, like monodon we did like uh, if you do 100,000 in one pond, it is already good. But in Vanami, I have seen that even in India, people are talking like 1 million baby shrimp in one hectare. Even a farmer like, he may not be very technologically advanced, but he stocks only in millions. He talk only, oh, I stock 0.5 million, 1 million, like that. So, that many more shrimp is there, more stocking density. So, we have to make sure that every shrimp get at least one or two pellets to eat. Because if there is less pellets, maybe the big one, the strong one, grab the pellet, the smaller one do not get the pellet and you get more size variation. So, uh, even though there are so many advantage of extruded shrimp feeds, this did not take off. Why this did not take off? Because great professors like uh, Albert Tacon, Dr. Addison, everybody have done work on this. But the problem is the hardware did not support the industry in the past. We had some very cumbersome and problematic technology. Those of you who have used the extruder will know that there is a vented head towards the die. So, if you open this, the pressure will go out and there will be more compaction of the pellet. But when you do this, there will be feed flowing out. It is, be, it is a mess in the extruder flow. It is a problem, it is not hygienic. So, nobody want to do this. <coughs> See here, these are the advantages, but there are a lot of problems also because of this. Next, somebody came up with a new technology, put some vacuum over here and then pull the vacuum to reduce the expansion. But again, this also had a lot of problems. You had a lot of hardware investment, so many additional gadgets, then you had to dispose of this and you get less of the SME, the specific mechanical energy which is used to cook the ingredients. This does not happen when you put all these gadgets into the extruder or some people like the earliest extruded shrimp feeds in Latin America, uh, in Brazil, they made with two extruders. You had one extruder to cook and then the output of this will go into the next extruder and they will form it into the pellet. So, you need double the investment, more time, more problems always. So, now we can do better extruded pellets which is similar to the pelleted feed with higher capacities because of lot of hardware changes that we have done now. We prefer to do the twin screw extrusion. We have better preconditioners. There are two motors on the shaft, so you can control the speed, you can control the mixing intensity, you can control the cook. Like the high shear, it is like conical from here to here. As it comes towards the end, you get more rapid agitation and distributive mixing. One of the major constraint on the extruder was, there is a die at the end and there is only that many number of holes because there is the surface area of the die and you can drill only that many holes into the die. You cannot drill more. So, we came up with a design of I don't know where it is going very fast. We have two dies towards the end of the extruder. So, there are two heads. So, we can drill two more holes into the die. These are the capacities. So, 
this is another type of extruder which is called a conical twin screw you get tapered shaft and more easier so if anybody wants to have more detailed information i can talk to you over lunch or after that so this is the high capacity extruder and we call it as the aquaflex because it's like the swiss army knife it can do many things it can do like floating feed it can do sinking feed it can do shrimp feed sea bass feed salmon feed uh, slow sinking feed all types of feeds and small diameter 0.5 mm or even 20 mm 30 mm it can do everything <coughs> so this is some extruded shrimp feed made in india being exported to many countries i don't know if i can click on this i just want to play the video you got to go to the hello play again you were also playing here but it's not playing up there okay it doesn't work i don't know um are you mimicking you're not uh you're Okay, so I have a cup. You can change it. Just change can change it. that. Um, where's your screen thing? Did you change the screen? <clears throat> no, up here you have a function. There. I don't know. I think better we skip. Okay. Choose the function key for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a video if possible. I'll uh, show it towards the end of the presentation. You're stuck. You just need to. It thinks you're on here still. Just click on the screen. Move your mouse until it's over the screen. There you go. Yeah. so now we have other ancillary devices to control the bulk density we have something called as a back pressure valve which is easier to control the bulk density of the pellet to make it like floating or sinking adjust uh, with a computer screen very easy for the operator then we have the waste recovery system uh, many of the guys who have this have told that like uh, they can just recover the money of investing on this within like 6 months because in the extruder you know at the start up and shut down there's lot of waste falling in the floor we just collect it and put it into the tank it make like a slurry and pump back to the pre conditioner otherwise you have to collect it dry it and then send it to remix lot of problems so this is a oil tank this can pump the oil into the pre conditioner or into your extruder this helps if you want to add some more oil directly because many time when you add the oil into the recipe and you do the sifting it forms the fine balls i don't know if many of you have observed this in the manufacturing of feed in the feed mill then when you do the sifting most of this is removed it goes out it doesn't go into the formulation so this oil tanks give you a option of pumping the oil directly into the pre conditioner so this again is a video of this extruder with two heads producing the shrimp feed in a feed mill uh, facility in india i don't think it's going to play here i'll just try <laughs> oh this one is playing i'm lucky <laughs> so you see the two head because many time when i give the presentation people think that this is more theoretical one extruder two die i don't think this will work how will the mass flow this will go right side or this will go left side but we have done this for 4 years and we have seen that this works pretty well and some people say oh maybe the bulk density between the right side and left side is different no it's always the same the bulk density variation is like like 5 grams per liter on a feed which is like 700 grams per liter and i've got questions like maybe the pellet size is not uniform we just need to fine tune the cutter motor speed 
the RPM of the cutter motor, 10 RPM or 20 RPM, just check. I think it's very good, it works fine. And it's all controlled through the computer system, so very precise operation. You can input the right amount of steam, water, whatever you want to do. And this is not in some high tech location like Norway or somewhere, this is in India. So you know that you guys can easily do this in Thailand because you have been doing this for many, many years. So it's much easier for you guys to do this. So this is some of the research which was done way back in 2004, comparing the pelleted feed with the extruded feed and the, comparing the FCRs and growths. But I don't dispute with Dr. Alan Davis, like maybe this is not apples to apples feed formulation comparison, but there is always scope, something to improve upon. So we have discussed all these points. This is the stumbling block, the extruder system is more expensive, but if we can get the investment from the management to do this. I think it will be a big saving for the company as well as for the shrimp farmer. So you can see the starch level, they need less starch compared to the ones on the pellet mill. So this is where you save a lot on the recipe cost, your feed formula cost. This is the shrimp feed different made on the extruder. You can see more uniform size of pellets. This is 0.6 mm, direct extruded, this is 0.4 mm. This requires some special upstream equipment, but is possible. So like the glass of water I showed you, like you can see this is very clear, no nutrient leaching. This, we have additional good dryer to cater to this. So the screens, you want to make sure that this doesn't fall off. Many of them ask, like, you want to make small pellet, should I have some very complex high technology uh, fluid bed dryer or something? Not required. We can do this with the horizontal bed dryer with mesh screens. So we have automated controls on the dryer, makes it easier how much output moisture you want. You can measure all these like inline sampling devices are now available. Like you can know the moisture of the pellet going into the dryer, you can know the moisture of the pellet coming out of the dryer. This can be synced on the uh, computer system and it can manage the temperature and the time, all these things automatically. We can be more assured when the system takes care compared to when the people handle the system. So, we have talked a lot about the rationale of using the automatic feeders, different types of automatic feeders. I saw this in Ecuador, large farms, they use multiple automatic feeders. These are some good things that we can follow, like what Dr. Alan Davis was saying, maybe every country there is some bad, there is some good. Let us take the good from this country, they use automatic feeders because maybe they have a problem, they use automatic feeders, but good, they have a solar system for the automatic feeder. These are the typical components and this is where the fines from the pelleted feed gets clogged. So every time you have to go and clean it. So if you don't clean it, the automatic feeder is not doing its job properly. Extruded feed works fine on the automatic feeder. These are some new systems and you can see that today there is not anybody without any smartphone. So these advanced systems like the AQ1 can be controlled and managed through the smartphone. So these are the major advantages, you get more data, you know what is happening in real time, you need not spend all your 24 hours inside the shrimp farm and you see many of the younger generation people, they do not want to come to the shrimp farming industry because they think that it is crazy, the middle of the hot sun, middle of nowhere. So you get more better management tools which will actually encourage the younger generation to come into the shrimp farming industry. In summary, like these are uh, some of the points of my discussion, you get more pellets, less fines, better quality pellet, less uh, pollution of the water, 
and does not clog the outlet of the auto feeders. So, in the age of the auto feeder, this is going to really take over. And I could say that like this is already taking over the industry in Latin America, in South America, in Ecuador, in Peru, in Chile, many people in Honduras, they want to invest on the extruded shrimp manufacturing facility. So, thank you very much. This is the tech center in Sabeta, Kansas. We do trials for our customers. If any of you would like to come there, we welcome you to be there. And thanks to USEC and American Soybean again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you.